Hi there, welcome to Lenten Lunch. I'm John Price, one of the pastors at Covenant Community Church in Wexford, and I want to thank Mark Helsel for asking me to be part of this this year. You know, we're often hated because of who we associate with. This is true for many sports fans. The teams you follow will make you be loved by some and hated by others. And by the time you see this, we'll know who the men's national champion is. For some of you, you might be hating the team that just beat your team. I'm a Kansas fan myself, and some of you might be hating me right now. A few weeks ago, someone came into my office and saw this on the wall and said, you're not a Kansas fan, are you? Immediately, I was marked, maybe even kind of hated to some degree. Today, we read in John chapter 15 about an even greater hatred and that's connected to the one that we follow. Not just our sports teams, but our Savior himself. Let's read John 15, 18 through 26. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. But all these things they will do to you on account of my name because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have been guilty of sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen and hated both me and my father. But the word that is written in their law must be fulfilled. They hated me without a cause. But when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the father, the spirit of truth, who proceeds from the father, he will bear witness about me. You know, Jesus' words must have jolted the disciples. I mean, they come in the midst of positive reinforcement that Jesus has been giving them that began back in chapter 14. Jesus had been speaking about not letting our hearts be troubled. I mean, <laughs> hatred's troubling. He's been telling them about the benefits of abiding in him, about the love that is to exist between believers how good grapes, good fruit make good wine. When all of a sudden he says, guess what? The world is going to hate you. You know, in The Cost of Discipleship, Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote these words about suffering of the believer. He said, suffering is the badge of the true Christian. The disciple is not above his master. And Luther reckoned suffering among the marks of the true church. That discipleship means allegiance to the suffering Christ. And it is therefore not at all surprising that Christians should be called upon to suffer. You know, these words came from a man who knew the hatred, the suffering of the Nazi congregation concentration camps because he chose to follow Christ and not Hitler. He chose to follow the one who the world hated. You know, as Christians, sometimes we tend to equate the good and easy life with God's pleasure, but that is not always the case. In fact, it could be said that the good and easy life could be an indication 
that the exact opposite is the case. It could mean that we're actually not following Christ as closely as we believe we are. You know, a life that is pleasing to God is life lived by the work and power of the Holy Spirit. One in which our words and deeds demonstrate the righteousness of Christ as works as work in us. The righteousness of Christ as work in us. A, a life lived in such a way not only points to Christ as the only hope in life and death, but because we point to Jesus and our need for him, sin is exposed. You know, when sin is exposed, it either leads to repentance or to hatred. But let me also remind us that we must discern whether the hatred or persecution that we are experiencing as Christians is truly because we are following Jesus. You know, we as individuals or as groups can bring hatred or persecution upon ourselves, not because we are following Jesus, but because of our own sin. You know, sometimes we are persecuted because of our stupidity. (laughs) Never been there before. Our rudeness, our self-righteousness, our annoying personality, or even our false piety. In this case, it's actually us they are rejecting, not Jesus. It's actually us that they hate, not Jesus. And this is so important for us to hear and acknowledge, yes, Jesus reminds us that people will reject us because of him. But let us be sure it's all about Jesus and not all about us. You know, some will love you because of who you follow. (laughs) Just like some will love me because I'm a Kansas fan. Some will love us because we follow Jesus. Others will hate you because of who you follow. Jesus. But Jesus doesn't leave us there and say, oh well, stinks to be you. No, he says he will send the helper. He said this way, but when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. This helper is the Holy Spirit who dwells in us, intercedes for us, and bears witness about Jesus for us. You see, remember, no matter who might be against us, Jesus is for us. If you are a follower of Jesus, he is for you. Whatever else you think, know that Jesus is for you. He will never leave you or forsake you. If you are not a follower of Jesus, the promise is the same for you. If you would come to him, come to him as the one who we all need. Have a great day. Thanks again for letting me share.